Let's talk about exponential and logarithmic functions, lesson number six, and we're going to introduce the laws of logarithms. This is just as important as the law of exponents. Let's develop these laws of logarithms so we can use them to solve problems. Let's take a look at the product law. So let's evaluate this and see what we can gain um, an understanding of here when we do these problems. So here we have log base 2 of 16 plus log base 2 of 8. If we were to do each of these, I'll do the first one here slowly. So log base 2 of 16, if that was equal to some unknown value v, then we would say, exponential form would say 2 to the v is equal to 16. And this 16 can be written as a power of 2, so it would be 2 to the 4 is equal to 2 to the v, and so we find out that v is equal to 4. Alright, doing the same thing then, here we have log base 2 of 16 is 4. If we did the same thing, we'd find out that that was 3, and so we'd find out that the result here would be 7. In this one here, we have, well actually let's go to the part 2. We have log base 2 of 16 times 8. Well this is equal to the log base 2 of 128 and if we did that we would find out that that was also equal to 7 because 2 to the 7 is equal to 128. Let's notice the similarities between this answer and this answer. Alright, in part B we have log base 3 of 27 that is 3 and then log base 3 of 3 is 1, that's equal to 4. Now let's take a look at log base 3 of 27 times 3. Well this is equal to log base 3 of 81, but we want to keep it in this form because, because we want to notice something. 3 to the exponent 4 is equal to 81, so this is equal to 4. And notice again here, notice these answers. Let's make a comment on the answers from A and B. Well look, it's the same answer. And here, this is how I want to talk about it. We say, the exponent that I have to put on 2 to make 16, if I add that to the exponent I have to put on 2 to get 8, the 4 plus 3, I would get 7. And that's the same as the exponent I have to put on 2 after I multiply 16 times 8 to get 128. It's that value 7. Well, let's take a look at the quotient law here and we'll evaluate the following. We have log base 2 of 16 minus log base 2 of 8. Again, what exponent do I have to put on 2 to become 16? That's 4. And the exponent I have to put on 2 to get 8? That's 3. So we get the value of 1 here. Now if we did this quotient, we have 16 divided by 8 is 2, so we could say log base 2 of the number 2, that's equal to 1. And then you can notice that these answers are the same. Interesting. If we take a look at part B, we have log base 3 of 27, which is equal to 3, minus log base 3 of 3 is 1, that's equal to 2, And we have log base 3 of 27 over 3. If we took this quotient first, it would be log base 3 of 9, and that's equal to 2. And again, we notice that these answers are the same. So what do we notice about A and B? It looks like when we do the subtraction here, that's the same answer here, that's the same answer here. These are the same answers. So here we notice two very important properties of logarithms, which are part of the laws of logarithms. So we have log base a. If we have a product, a number times another number, m times n, the log base a of that product is equal to the log base a of m plus the log base a of n. That is the product law. In the same fashion, log base a 
of a quotient, a number m divided by the number n, is equal to the log base a of the top of that quotient m minus log base a of the bottom n. And here it is in everyday words. We can talk about this. We can say the exponent I have to put on a to get the product is the same thing as the exponent I have to put on the base a to get each part of the product. In the same way here we have the exponent I have to put on a to get a quotient is equal to the exponent I have to put on the top minus the exponent I have to put on the on a to get the bottom. Let's take a look at class example one to illustrate further this product law and quotient law. So we have log base 2 of 12 minus log base 2 of 3. We can say this is equal to, now notice that the bases are the same here. Here is the same base. So the same base. This is log base 2. And noticing this, that this is a subtraction. So we're talking about a quotient here, 12 divided by 3. This is log base 2 of 12 divided by 3 is 4. And the log base 2 of 4 is the exponent I have to put on 2 to get 4. Or in other words, we're saying 2 to the v is equal to 4. And so v would have to be 2. This is equal to 2. Now what is the advantage of doing something like this? Well, when you see here log base 2 of 12, there is no exponent I put on 2, a nice exponent to put on 2 to make 12. And there's no nice exponent to put on 2 to get 3. And so this is a complicated, perhaps, more complex answer. But here, if we look at it as the quotient, then log base 2 of 12 divided by 3, this 4 is a power of 2. So this is very nice. Now, if we were to go through and, and do it using a calculator, we could say log base 2 of 12. We can see that that's not a nice number. We can also go back and say log base 2 of the number 3. We also know that that is not a very good number. You can see all those decimals there. But if we did our log base 2 of 12 and we subtracted exactly, you can see these decimals, these numbers are exactly the same here. So when we take, or sorry, log base 2 of 12 and subtract this log base 2 of 3, we get exactly 2, just as we suspected. So taking a look at part B here, then we can say log base 6 of 9, which is not a nice number, plus log base 6 of h, which is also not a nice number, minus log base 6 of 2, which is also not a nice number. But taking a look at parts of it here, we notice this addition sign of this log, a log plus another log, is an exponent plus another exponent. So we can think, this can be thought of as log base 6 of 9 times 8 and then minus the log base 6 of 2. Well here we also notice that there's a subtraction as well. So we could say this is equal to log base 6 of that value of 72 divided by 2 which is equal to the log base 6 of the number 36. And hey, we we know what this is. If we did it quickly here, log base 6 of 36, if that was un, an unknown value, 6 to the v is equal to 36, then we can see that v is equal to 2. This is equal to 2. And so what we found was it might have been complicated along the way, but this can simplify. The laws of logarithms can simplify some of our calculations, and we get a nice number in the end. Noticing when to use the laws of logarithms and which law to use takes some practice. Let's take a look at example number two here. And we're going to use the law of logarithms to write this as one single logarithm. We're going to end up with log base something equal of one argument. Well, let's take a look here. What we're going to notice is these operations. We have a plus sign here. We also have a negative sign here. We also have a plus sign in here. And it looks like we have some order of operations happening as well. So here, 
when we write log base x plus log base x of 75 minus, and now we're going to work with this bracket. Working with this addition, we see that we have a log plus another log. This addition of logs will suggest to us that we can say using the same base, the log of the same base, and take the product of those arguments, 2 times 3. Okay, and that's equal. Now we're going to work with, again, we have these two operations here. We have an addition of logs here. So this is going to be, oh, this should be a 10. The addition of logs here suggests that we can say the log of base x of the product of this argument with this argument and then subtracting this. And now I'll simplify that to 6. Now here we have the log minusing another log. So recognizing this, I'll simplify this now. 10 times 75 is 750. And subtracting suggests then this is a quotient. We can say this is divided by 6. So a subtraction of logs can be thought of as the log of a quotient, a log of a division. And so this is going to be log x. And what is 750 divided by 6? Is 125. Well, we took something that was looked very complicated and did some work here using the laws of logarithms, and we found this to be simplified to log base x of 125. Now, can we evaluate if x is equal to 5? Well, if we put in 5 in the original one, that would take us a long time. But here we have a simplified version, and we could say the log base 5 of the argument 125. If that's some unknown value v, the exponential form is 5 to the exponent v is equal to 125. And we know this can be written as 5 cubed, therefore v is equal to 3. Or in other words, log base 5 of 125 is equal to 3. Okay, let's take a look at class example number 3, and we're going to use the law of logs to write this whole expression as a single logarithm. So again, I'm going to just circle these operations. Here we have a, an addition, we have a subtraction, and we have another subtraction here. Now going from left to right, I'm going to take a look at this part first and say, okay, we have an addition of logs which can be written as the log using, we need to make sure that those are the same base, log base b. And now the addition of logs can be thought of as the log of a product of the arguments. So here, this is 2 times 3. And then we can write the rest of it. So here, minus log base b of 6 minus log base b of 8. All right, continuing on here, I'm again, I'm going to circle those operations of addition and subtraction. Here we have log base b of 6, and this is going to be a subtraction. It means that this is going, to, a subtraction of logs can be translated to become a log of a quotient, so base b log of a quotient 6 divided by 6, and then we can write the rest of it, log base b of 8. And here, this is going to be equal to 6 divided by 6 is 1, so log base b of 1 minus log base b of 8. Now we want to write it as a single logarithm. So this is, again, I can circle the operations of subtraction there. And we can say this can be written as the log of the quotient of 1 divided by 8 
base, base B here. And there is our final result. Now in part B, if we, we can evaluate if B is equal to 2. So log using B and replacing it with the number 2. Here the argument is 1 over 8. So here we can say, uh, if we said that was some unknown, then we say 2 to the v is equal to 1 over 8. Or in other words, 2 to the v is equal to 2 to the negative 3. Then v is equal to negative 3. So we can say, then this is equal to negative 3. Taking a look at class example 4, we have well, what looks like a former diploma question here. We have the expression log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of 2x minus log base 2 of x squared minus log base 2 of y. And that's equivalent to what? Well, again here, I'm going to circle these addition and subtraction signs so that we can make sure that we have all of them. So it looks like I'll take care of this first, order of operations. This addition of logs suggests that we can talk about a log of a product of the argument. So x times 2x. And then here we have log 2x squared minus log base 2 of y. And this x times 2x is equal to 2x squared. And again, we have this subtraction and this subtraction as well, but I'll deal with this one first. And so this subtraction suggests then we have 2x squared and divided by this argument now, x squared. And then copying the rest here, we have log base 2 of y. And again, we have this subtraction. So simplifying this, we have this x squared will cancel out that x squared. We have log base 2 of 2 minus log base 2 of y. Now here, let's take a look at this piece here. And remember, log base 2, and the argument is the exact same as the base. So this value is equal to 1. In other words, what exponent do I have to put on 2 to become this 2? Well, that's the exponent 1. So this result then is equal to 1 minus log base 2 of y. So we can see then that this is our answer. Let's take a look at class example number 5. And we're going to determine the value of this expression if we talk about p over q being 8. Well, here, let's take a look at how we can solve this. Well, it looks like we have a 3 in front of each one here. So let's factor out that 3. Since there's a 3 in each part of the expression, we can say it's 3 times log base 2 of p minus, and here's log base 2 of q. Now when we take a look inside the bracket, we can notice that there is a subtraction here. When we notice that subtraction, then we have the subtraction of logs seems to suggest that it can become a log with the same base. We have to notice that it's the same base. The log of a quotient of the arguments, p divided by q. Well, in this case, then, it's 3 times our log base 2 of p over q. And now, let's evaluate if p over q is equal to 8. We can now replace this p over q with the number 8. So this is going to be 3 log base 2 of p over q, which we know is 8 eight from this information and now we have well what is that equal to 
Well, if we just made that equal to v, we could use the exponential form here. Now remember that there's a 3 in front. So here we're going to have to make that equal to log base 2 of 8 is equal to v over 3. And we could say this is, actually let's back up here because since we know that we can just talk about this part, log base 2, log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Let me do that on the side here. So we can say log base 2 of 8, if that's equal to some value, then 2 to the v is equal to 8. So v, 2 to the v is equal to 2 to the 3. v is equal to 3. So that part here, this whole thing, log base 2 of 8, can be thought of as the number 3. And so this whole result will equal 3 times 3, which is 9. Let's perform some further investigation here so that we can try and find out and develop the power law. So let's take a look at 2 log x. And let's write that as log x plus log x. Well, that makes sense. If we have 2 log x's, then that's equal to a log x plus a log x. But being familiar with one of the laws of logarithms, is that when you have an addition of logs, that is equivalent to writing the log, and here this is all base 10, the log of the product of those arguments. Here is one argument here, and here's the other one, x times x. Well, that's equal to log, and x times x is equal to x squared. So did we show then that 2 log x is equal to log of x squared. Yes, we did. In part b here, let's prove that 3 log base 2 of a is equal to log base 2 of a cubed. Now how we're going to do that is start with the left side here, which is 3 log 2a, and only use mathematical ideas to go from this left side and converting it and see if we end up with exactly what the right side is. Using the same concept here as taking 2 log and making it log x plus log x, we're going to make this 3 times log base 2 of a into log base 2 of a plus another log base 2 of a plus a third log base 2 of a. Now in noticing this op these operations here, then we can use our law of logarithms to say well, let's put the first one together. We could say log base 2. That's the addition of logs here suggests and is equivalent to the log of the product as long as the bases are equal. So a times a. And then if we were to do the second one too, and I'll just be very thorough here, so we'll just put in the third one here, and that's equivalent to log base 2 of a times a times another a. But what is a times a times a? That's equal to log base 2 of, or this is equal to log base 2 of a cubed, which ends up, if we look at it, it's exactly equal to the right side. So the left side equals the right side. So that is what we wanted. In part C, we're going to write an expression equivalent to a, this number a, times log base b of c. So here, using these examples as patterns, here we can think of this 3 as an a, and then it ended up there. So let's see. We can say a log base b of c is equal to, written this way, log of the same base b, and then you have a, or c, sorry, c, the argument. And then we have the number in front is now the exponent there. So it brings us to this rule, the power law of logarithms. 
Here we have log base a of m to the n is equivalent to that exponent coming down here is n times log base a of m and vice versa as well. If you have a number in front times the log base a of m, this number can be almost moved to become the exponent on that argument. So n log base a of m is equal to log base a of m to the exponent n. Let's take a look at class example number six and without a calculator we're going to evaluate each of the following. We have log base 4 of 16 and then raised to, wow, this huge number 12. And at first we think, wow, this is going to be crazy big. And we might want to use a calculator, but without a calculator, this is tough. Well, if we notice our power rule, we notice that this 12 is an exponent on this argument, in this argument. And so using the power rule, we can bring it down and place it in front of this log. So this is equivalent to the exponent 12 coming down, and that's multiplied by log base 4 of 16. And then this seems so much more manageable. This log base 4 of 16 is equal to, well, what exponent do I put on 4 to become 16? That's the number 2. And so 12 times 2 here is equal to 24. Well, that seems very much more manageable now that we know the power law. Take a look at this. We have log with no shown base here, but we can assume that it's base 10. Log base 10 of 10 to the exponent 21. Again, this is an exponent in the argument, and therefore that can come down using our power rule. We can say this is 21 times log 10. And remember this hidden base here, this is a base 10. So we can say this is 21 times. What exponent do I have to put on 10 to become 10? That's the exponent 1. And we have 21 here. Well, that power rule really does help us. If we have this complex number, or this number with it raised to an exponent, any exponent, but especially in cases where it's a high exponent, logs can help us bring it down. Let's take a look at class example 7. We can say log base 6 of 6 to the n. Again, this is not a number, but look, we can see that this is in the exponent of the argument. By the power rule, it can come down in front. So we have n times log base 6 of 6. And this log base 6 of 6 is equal to 1. So this result here is just n. In part b, we have 6 to the exponent of the log base 6 of n. And here, we need to simplify this. We can say that, take just taking a look at this part here, we're saying, what exponent on base 6 to result in n? And then we're using that exact same exponent to put on 6 to get n. So this is equal to n. Now class example 7 is an example of this following identity here. We have log base b of b to the n is equal to n. In other words, what ex exponent do I put on b to result in b to the n? Well, that exponent is n. And here, we have b to the exponent of log base b to the n is equal to n. So we can say, taking a look at this one, we can say for the exponent part, let me just circle it, is this is the exponent I have to put on b to get n, and then I put that exponent on b, and what will I end up with? Well, I'm going to get n. So the identities follow from the fact that logarithms and exponential functions are inverses. We're going to complete these assignment questions, and uh, good luck with them, and I will see you in class.